This video has a new breakdown for a severe storm outbreak and a big storm system on the way. That includes the details on the winter weather side of it as well. Stay tuned for all those details within the next 10 to 12 minutes. I want to start the latest update by giving you a general overview of the latest impact forecast using this GFS ensemble guidance. This has a great overview of what you need to know for your area and what impacts to expect. Let's start with what's going to be going on as we go through the near term within the next 12 to 24 hours after this video is posted. As we go into the afternoon and evening of our Saturday, March 20. 9th of 2025. Overall, we're just going to be noticing a very active pattern for central and eastern zones with a couple areas of low pressure. One of them will be bringing a broad zone, watching showers and storms. Most of these expected to be on the sub-severe side of things as you push anywhere from the lower Mississippi Valley and Mid-South all the way on up into the Ohio Valley. There will be some showers and storms on and off in parts of the Midwest all the way over to the Northeast U.S. with a winter weather zone as well on the northern fringes of that, which I'll cover more in detail as we go a little bit deeper into the video. We'll see new winter weather moving on out with some heavy snow possible late Saturday day into parts of Nebraska and South Dakota. That's going to be on the backside of a new low pressure system that is going to be coming out of the west, moving into the plains, and that is going to lead to a likely severe weather event to kick off as we go through the evening and into the overnight hours of Saturday into Saturday night exiting parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and North Texas, and beginning to stretch into parts of Northwest Arkansas, Missouri, and Iowa. This is just going to be the beginning of a big winter weather and severe weather event. You can see we'll be watching plenty of freezing rain and snow going on strong on up there into the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and interior Northeast. And then as we go through the day Sunday, we'll likely watch a severe weather outbreak begin to unfold, moving through parts of the Mississippi Valley into the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and all the way back down to the Mid-South over a very broad region, which I'll show you why it's such a broad region once again in just a minute. Anywhere from Michigan and Ohio and Indiana and Illinois all the way back down to northeast Texas and points in between. It looks like a possibly significant outbreak of storms that could include all severe weather hazards in a prime environment Sunday evening and then heading through the nighttime hours. These storms will likely continue to go strong as they get closer to the Appalachians. You can see by the time we go towards around Monday early to mid-morning, storms anywhere from the lower Great Lakes region all the way back down to the mid-south, possibly still in the severe fashion as they move through. And we'll only have the better chance for severe weather once again as we get closer to the east coast and the gulf coast zones that see storms as we go into monday afternoon and evening anywhere from around new york stretching all the way back down to louisiana and points in between along the gulf and east coast it looks like a fair game a threat for severe storms as we go towards around the monday evening time frame after storms will have already been moving through the appalachians and then from there i think things will begin to dry out and clear out for most zones maybe an april fool's little snow event there on the far tail end of the front into the interior north east or even closer to the main New Hampshire or Massachusetts coast. Overall, though, things really clearing out by the time we get towards Tuesday. Now that I've overviewed the general look at how this storm could impact you, I want to begin talking in more detail about what's likely going to be the most significant, and that's going to be the severe weather. And I want to start by breaking down how this jet stream, or the mid-level jet stream, 15 to 20,000 feet on up into the sky, is going to influence the severe weather risk day by day. Let's start with what's going to happen as we go overnight tonight through our Friday night and then into our Saturday, March 29th of 2025 where you can see around that time we're going to be watching a strong piece of jet stream energy called a trough moving out of parts of the southwest U.S. and then curling moisture on up into parts of the southern and central plains. That's what's going to lead to that possibility of severe weather as early as around Saturday into Saturday night into parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, even into Nebraska, and then on the east side of pieces of energy like this as well as where you can get some severe weather threats. And that's why into the nighttime hours we could see severe weather building into places like Iowa, Missouri, and then back down into Arkansas on the leading edge of that trough. That trough will only continue to push east with its leading edge, moving further east into parts of the Mississippi Valley, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, all the way back down to the Mid-South with a broad area that's likely going to have that severe weather potential as moisture will be lifting north through such a large zone. As we go through, again, the late Sunday into Sunday night time frame, the trough won't even end there. It will continue pushing east as we go through late Sunday and then through the day Monday, dragging a big area of wind energy in the atmosphere closer down to the Gulf Coast as well as the East Coast. And of course, any winds that are veering in a different direction closer to the surface could lead to some spinning in the atmosphere, and that could also elevate a tornado threat. I'll talk a little bit more on that, especially for the Sunday and Monday threats. That'll be in a little bit more detail here in just a few minutes. First, though, I want to go ahead and give you a look at the highest confidence of all these severe weather days, and that is for 
for our level 2 to level 3 severe weather risk on my 0 to 7 scale for our Saturday, March 29th, as well as Saturday night. That's going to include exiting the plains and then moving into some parts of Missouri and surrounding spots where isolated to scattered 60 plus mile per hour wind gusts can be expected. Scattered large hail is looking likely in some cases upwards of 1.5 to 2 inches in diameter. That's getting bigger than the size of ping pong balls. There will also be that possibility for a few tornadoes. And even if we don't get storms to fire up in a place like Texas where the threat is more conditional, if they do fire up, they will have that potential to produce that very large hail, some damaging winds, and even an isolated tornado risk. So keep in mind if you live in any of these zones, especially in the dark green or yellow, severe weather could target you as early as Saturday into Saturday night. From that Saturday night risk into Sunday, we're likely going to see that piece of jet stream energy broadening out, giving a bigger area that threat for severe weather. And you can see it here where I'm already highlighting level threes to level fours of seven for your area if you're in the highlighted zones on screen for severe weather for that Sunday. Sunday and Sunday night event that could turn into an outbreak quite easily. Anywhere in the yellow and orange is where I'm anticipating an outbreak of scattered to widespread damaging winds will be possible, especially large to very large hail, which in some cases could exceed one to two inches in diameter. And not for everyone, but in some cases we could watch more widespread tornado threats. Many spots will at least have the potential for some brief or weak tornadoes across this zone though, so be on the lookout. This looks like a pretty significant event from the Ohio Valley back down to the lower Mississippi Valley. Again, this is for Sunday and Sunday night, and I'll talk a little bit more on some of the ingredients working for and against your area as part of this event in just a moment. While the confidence isn't perfect on this either and exactly where the highest risk zones for especially tornadoes will be, it looks like a broad damaging wind, hail, and tornado event will continue east out of Sunday night into early Monday and then through the rest of the day Monday into Monday night, exiting parts of the Ohio Valley back down to the Gulf Coast states like Louisiana and Mississippi and then getting through the rest of the Gulf Coast and East Coast as well as on up the Mid-Atlantic shores. Be on the lookout anywhere from southern New Hampshire all the way back down to the Florida Panhandle for some of the severe weather by the time we go deeper into the day Monday. Now I want to talk a little bit more in detail about some of the specific ingredients for severe weather from Sunday and Sunday night through Monday and Monday night. And one of those is what you're seeing on screen here with the European model. And what this is showing is the lower level jet stream. These winds are going to be crossing over or creating a little bit more shear where you've got directional rotation in the winds in the atmosphere. And this could lead to that tornado threat wherever we see some of the highest values of the these winds closer to the surface as we go through late Sunday and then of course through the day Monday. You can definitely see here that we're going to have stronger low level winds crossing over those jet stream winds higher up in the atmosphere. That's going to be as you come out of Arkansas and Mississippi and then on up through Tennessee, Kentucky, and then through the far southeastern parts of places like Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. And with that kind of setup, assuming we don't see any sort of rain earlier in the day or a cap on the severe weather potential as a result of a warm layer in the atmosphere. Any storms that do fire up in this area could have that highest potential for tornadoes in addition to the damaging winds and hail, and that's why in a lot of these spots I have that level 4 of 7 on my O&W severe scale. By the way, keep in mind that these lower level jet stream winds will only cross and create some of that shear with the mid-level winds more as we go likely through the late afternoon and evening of Sunday into Sunday night. So depending on the timing of these storms, if they do take a little bit longer to develop, they might actually have even stronger ingredients to work with, especially in the atmosphere, and that could be concerning for a nocturnal event even into some points further east. And then of course Monday will have a broad area with definitely at least moderate shear as a result of crossing winds in the atmosphere. You can see those oranges with these stronger lower level winds that will be more south to north than the southwest to northeast winds further up. That's going to be as we go through the day Monday from Florida all the way on up into the northeast U.S. Any storms that have storm energy to work with closer to the surface could definitely be on that severe side and even produce tornadoes in that environment. While the shifting of those winds in the jet stream as you go on up through the atmosphere looks very favorable for severe weather, including tornadoes, and that's why I have a very broad risk zone highlighted day by day, I do want to point out the fact that especially Sunday night threat is a little bit more uncertain here, especially as you go on up towards a place like Illinois and Indiana. Some guidance is like what I'm showing here on screen with the European model indicating a very modest instability getting further north through those states. That could be as a result of some earlier day storms or clouds moving through. While that activity could be on the severe side, it would definitely hinder a later day tornado threat in comparison to a place like back down here into Arkansas or Tennessee, where it looks like the atmosphere will go more untapped through the day. And unless we see some sort of cap or warm layer in the atmosphere deeper into the afternoon and evening, we would generally have a very high risk for tornadoes and all forms of severe weather into the Sunday night time frame. So I just want to point that out. It's a little bit more 
conditional in places like Illinois or Indiana, but it could ramp up to a very high degree there into Ohio, Michigan, surrounding spots. So be on the lookout for that. And the same will go with any storms that we see into Monday. While instability will be a little lower, you could definitely see on that jet stream graphic I was showing just a minute ago that the low-level winds will be kicking up in a slightly different direction from the mid-level winds. So you want to be on the lookout from the Gulf Coast all the way on up to the East Coast as we go again into Monday afternoon and evening by this point in time. With that being said, that leaves me only the winter weather side of the storm to talk about. I'm going to first talk about blended guidance and where it's generally indicating the best chance for 24-hour increments of snow will occur. Then we'll talk a little bit more about where some of the ice storm types of events will be going on as well, anywhere from parts of the Midwest and Great Lakes over to the Northeast. You can see here just as we go through the near term, this is from around Saturday early morning to Sunday early morning, we're going to watch some decent snow totals of at least a few inches through some of the higher elevations in places like Utah and Colorado. And then we could see a shield of three to six inches of snow at least as you come out of the panhandle of Nebraska and into southern South Dakota. Then from there, I think we see our snow event really ramp up as you get into parts of Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and then the upper peninsula of Michigan, where we could see widespread at three to six inches in some of these spots. And in that heaviest stripe, getting closer to a place like Marquette, Michigan, getting closer to around six to 12 inches of snow. Otherwise, other than some brief snow or ice to kick off this event in a place like the northeast U.S., it will be an all-rain event until we maybe see a little bit of snow to finish it off into Tuesday. Again, that's just a general idea of where the heaviest snow will be. The exact totals might differ a little bit from what I was just showing on that blended guidance, and these freezing rain totals might differ a little bit, but overall, there's going to be quite a bit of freezing rain by the time we get through Monday afternoon from Minnesota to Maine and points in between, including the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, where we'll also see some snow. It is going to be a wintry mess anywhere here from eastern Minnesota through parts of northern Wisconsin, northern Michigan, and then on over into the interior northeast, where any of these zones in those deeper pinks, which is a lot of this highlighted zone, we could pick up upwards of a half an inch of ice. That's going to cause power outages. It is going to cause very slick, if not impassable, roadways and especially bridges. It could lead to trees snapping all kinds of problems. Definitely take it easy and try to stay inside this weekend and even into the early part of next week in these zones as a result of the hazardous winter weather conditions. Stay tuned to your latest National Weather Service forecast updates as well by going to weather.gov, that is weather.gov website.